Hello everyone, this is Pal Ponder on Weather. In this update, we're gonna be talking about a dynamic storm system that's gonna bring some 70 mile per hour winds and some big hail producers, as well as some flooding rains. So if you're new to the channel, click the subscribe button and the notification bell to get all my daily updates to keep you ahead of the storm. So let's get right to it. A good morning, everyone. Happy Monday. This is Monday, May the 24th. And what we're looking at here is the expanded view here. And you can see Anna. We could actually finally say goodbye to Anna that has now dissipated our first name storm of the season. You can definitely see out here in the Caribbean, it's pretty much predominantly clear now. So it's uh, you're clearing out and you're getting a welcome relief out there. But how in Texas, man, it's a broken record. We got wave and disturbance after disturbance that's been inundating the state. And that is going to continue later on today. You can actually see on the satellite picture where the storm prediction uh, potential probably is going to be later on this afternoon. As we've got a lot of instability out here in West Texas, uh, going into portions of uh, Kansas, as well as Nebraska. And that'll set the stage for what looks like to be a, 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 a you know, severe outbreak later on this afternoon. So yesterday we had some nasty, nasty storms as well. They were centered back because you have a ridge back here that was centered further west. So, but yeah, they blew up over New Mexico, especially into Colorado. We had some 80 plus mile per hour wind reports in Colorado yesterday, as well as eight tornado reports. And these are just literally preliminary reports. So these were these, these will go up over time as the National Weather Service will do the uh, the investigation. But that shift will shift just a little bit further east you know, later on this afternoon, and that'll set the stage for yet another round of, of severe, severe thunderstorms, probably starting about four or five o'clock. So if you take a look at the, uh, the flash index, uh, that'll kind of give you an idea of where the storms could be. This is a, your lightning indicator. This would be uh 21 zero. That would be about four o'clock this afternoon. So yeah, we could be seeing supercell thunderstorms firing along the dry line here and out in West Texas, That'll be arcing around the ridge of high pressure into uh, Kansas and in Nebraska. And yeah, Minnesota, it, Minneapolis is going to be under the gun for those severe thunderstorms. Probably won't be until the evening hours for you guys. But yeah, you could be definitely looking out for some severe weather later on today and going into Wisconsin. So you're not going to be left out either as it gets going to get closer as this ridge will slowly start to break down. The storms will slowly start shifting further east as we go throughout the week. But today, that storm prediction, as far as winds, could be pretty elevated. I'm not thinking 80 mile per hour winds like we saw yesterday, but probably more likely 70 in isolated spots. But there'll be a nasty line developing later on this afternoon with some easily 55, 65 mile per hour wind gust. And yes, you could see some isolated gusts in the 70 plus mile per hour range. So definitely be on the lookout uh, for those nasty supercells. But yeah, there is the Storm Prediction Center set up for later on this afternoon. Essentially a slight risk for some severe weather from Midland to Lubbock to uh, Amarillo. If you live in Garden City, Kansas, uh, to Colby, to, M to McCoy, all the way to Norfolk, you could be under the gun for some severe weather uh, later on this afternoon. Even down to Fort Stockton and then getting in later on in the evening, in Sioux Falls and going into Minneapolis, this would probably be more likely like your nine, 10 o'clock time frame in Minneapolis, but you could be seeing some big, bigger storms uh, later on this later on this evening, and that'll swing across into upper portions of Wisconsin. Uh, so definitely be on the lookout uh, for that. And yes, that tornado threat is gonna be prevalent uh, later on this afternoon. There's your wind threat, as well as your hill threat. You're gonna have to be dealing with those very larger hailstones uh, later on this afternoon into the early evening hours. But even that tornado threat as well into portions from Amarillo to Garden City, you're gonna be under the gun for seeing a probably an isolated tornado. So definitely be on the lookout for that and stay weather aware, you know, in those areas. So as we get into Tuesday, not much changes for Texas. We just have yet another disturbance come across and that's going to bring some more heavy rain after you receive a lot of heavy rain today you're going to get more heavy rain tomorrow especially probably further north into more or less like north texas 
that'll extend into Oklahoma as we watch these just vortices. This is your seven, your 500 millibar uh, vorticity index to kind of show you the spin and the upper atmosphere of these like multiple disturbances is going to come across. And you can see it shifts a little bit further east as we go through in the day on Tuesday. And that'll set the stage for yet another round of severe weather. Probably not as prevalent. It'll wind down because we're going to be in more or less in between two systems. But still, you could see some marginal risk for thunderstorms anywhere from Fort Stockton and shifting a little bit further east going into central portions of uh, Wisconsin by then and to Des Moines. You know, going into Kansas City area, into Missouri, uh, so you're going to be inundated with some, 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 you know, some of those stronger storms as we go into the day on a Tuesday. As we swing to Wednesday, now we have to look from the northwest, and yet we have another disturbance in the upper levels that are gonna, that's going to be swinging across. It's going to be diving from the northwest down to the southeast. And yes, you could be under the gun for more severe weather, but also the Northeast is gonna get into the action now too, because they have a short wave that's gonna be coming across. And these could get pretty nasty for you guys up there. I mean, you've been very warm. You're gonna be a lot, you've been very warm. You've already seen some 90s up there in the Northeast. So it's got plenty of fuel to tap into as this short wave comes across. And you, yes, you are going to be looking at for some severe weather coming to the day on a Wednesday. And yeah, even the Storm Prediction Center has highlighted that threat into the Northeast. And I do feel this is probably going to be upgraded to a slight risk because some of these storms could be nasty into uh, Ohio, getting into much of Pennsylvania, say Pittsburgh, all of upstate New York into Maine, all the bigger cities, Washington, D.C., Philly, New York City, Boston. Yes, you could be under the gun or some severe weather come one of the day on Wednesday. So definitely be on the lookout for that. But yeah, that second short wave will be coming across. We get a break in Texas. Nothing happens in Texas on Wednesday, especially in Oklahoma. But up to the north, yes, we could be looking at some more, another round of severe weather in the central part of the U.S. This is May. This is your most active time of the season for May and the wettest time of the season. So this is pretty somewhat normal to see severe weather in much of the country especially the central part of the u.s and you're going to be under the gun for that severe weather as we go into the day on a wednesday so here's your here's your thursday you know this is zero zero this is your thursday six o'clock uh vorticity index again we're gonna have to look at the northwest because we have yet another system that's going to be coming from the north pushing a boundary to the south. And this is what they call Northwest flow. This is pretty prevalent. This is pretty common. But the end of May, going into June, we watch these systems come off the Rockies, come off in downslope wind, blow up over Oklahoma, probably get into North Texas with some severe weather and a round of heavy rain. And I do feel that's gonna be setting the stage as we go into uh, Thursday, because even the Storm Prediction Center has highlighted that threat even day four out. So yeah, they're pretty pretty concerned about this Northwest flow event that's going to be coming across by the time we get into Thursday. Yeah, Oklahoma City, Kansas City, Tulsa, uh, Wichita, Kansas, and to Overland Park, Kansas. Yes, you could be under the gun for uh, a round of severe weather. And as we go into Thursday night, end of Friday morning, yeah, I'm expecting what they call an outflow boundary to form out ahead of it. The leading edge of cooler air will be able to be pushed the storms further south into North Texas. And yeah, we could be looking at a round of showers and thunderstorms into the overnight hours traveling from Oklahoma down into North Texas as you wake up on Friday morning with uh, some storms to be dealing with. And yeah. There's your flash index. By the time we get into Friday afternoon, those storms will be setting that boundary. That's the problem with these Northwest flow events. They come across, but they tend to stall. And once they stall, it'll have a boundary. And that, that's when we could set up for a round of flooding rains, especially if you've already received a lot of rainfall in this area. We're probably going to be getting a lot of rain Monday into Tuesday in the North Texas will dry out Wednesday and Thursday. But with that storm threat on the Northwest flow coming in on Thursday night, going into Friday, 
we could be setting the stage for another heavy rain event and probably some flash flooding we're going to be dealing with as we go through the uh, afternoon hours and the evening hours on Friday night because that's your flash index on Friday night talking about Friday night lights in North Texas you could be under the gun for that uh, severe weather and as you go into uh, into the portions of you know Virginia and the Carolinas that ridge will finally start to break down by then so that could be setting the stage for these systems that will end with the northeast swing further south as we go into the day on uh, uh you know thursday into into friday with those showers and uh, thunderstorms but yeah there's your there's your uh, anomaly index as far as precipitation goes for this time of year so Yes, you're already talking about your wettest time of the year. And we're, when you're seeing indications of, you know, one and a half to two, 200% above average precipitation, that is some heavy rainfall. And of these blue areas, that could be indicative where we could be seeing some flash flooding setting up with some very high rainfall rates uh, in these areas as we go through uh, Friday evening. So as we go through Saturday, again, that Northwest flow stays pretty prevalent. It will stay a little bit further south. The ridge will be breaking down by then. It's not gonna be locked and loaded like it was throughout most of the week. That's gonna be give you some holes in the atmosphere where you can sneak some thunderstorms in and seek some pre uh, precipitation back into the picture. So yeah, I'm definitely looking at some rain showers going back into Louisiana, going back into Mississippi, Yes, going back into Alabama portions and this these thunderstorms will start to creep further south as we go through the evening hours on Saturday and especially as we go through the day on a Sunday that will just creep a little bit further south the ridge breaks down even further and now where you have not seen much rain of anything over the last seven days ten days the rain is going to be hitting back in the picture but again, you're gonna be dry pretty much predominantly most of the week. So you're talking, this is Sunday now, this is only Monday. So as we come across, yeah, South uh, South Georgia, Southern Cal South Carolina, getting into Northern Panhandle of Florida, you could be looking at uh, some more showers and thunderstorms by then as Texas will begin to <laughs> you know, dry out uh, uh, once again for a little bit. And yeah, going into Memorial Day, it, it doesn't look too bad guys i mean it really doesn't look too bad i know this is pretty far out but i think we're going to be uh, dealing with enough between now and then that a lot of this atmosphere will be kind of wrung itself out by then so overall i think memorial day does not look that bad um, as we go into the next seven days as far as precipitation goes yeah you can see where where we uh, under the gun for most of these disturbances and troughs and northwest flow setups in the central part of the u.s we could be looking at multi-inch rains from texas to oklahoma to arkansas to portions of missouri to kansas especially nebraska and iowa and as the ridge will slowly start to break down over time we could start introducing some rain showers and st some storms back in the picture but that won't be until this weekend and a lot of this feedback will happen throughout the week much of the mid-atlantic states but not much rain to speak of out west yes we do predominantly get some well to the north but we have some much needed rain uh, for the dakotas but yeah there's your anomalies as far as precipitation goes to end may and here there's your highlighted threats of your wetter wetter of uh, time frames and and drier areas over these next uh, seven days and where you see where the rain's predominantly going to fall that's where the cooler temperatures are going to be between now and the end of the month and where the ridge is dominating that's going to be your drier temperature it's just going to be it's just going to be as simple as that i mean where the ridge is you heat up and as where the cooler temperatures and the cloudier temperatures that's going to be your cooler you know cooler areas uh, for much of the central u.s so hey i appreciate you guys uh, watching do like this video definitely leave your comments below and don't forget to subscribe to my channel to catch the latest update, where I protect you before and.